Well, I travel all the way to King's Cross because I want to show you guys the first ever AI powered Michael Forther camera, the Alice. Let's go. So welcome back to my latest vlog, <laughs> the noisy London. <laughs> well, anyway, today is going to be super special because yes, I mentioned about the first ever AI powered camera. Oh my God, it's right behind me there. Hi, welcome back to my latest vlog. I'm super excited because I will be one of the first guys to actually see a working version of Project Alice. And uh, I was super excited about it. I talked about it many times in numerous locations in my live streams and vlogs. And uh, yes, this is a camera that I think could potentially change how we shoot things. So I'm really keen to learn more about uh, the camera and also the tech behind it. So I'm going to have a chat with the owner, the initiator, the inventor, <laughs> the idea generator, uh, Vish uh, Vishal, later on. So. Uh, Stay tuned for that. It's super noisy as usual because I'm in London. Oh my lord! Look at look at this. This is crazy. This is a big, massive building, like a ship. Oh my lord! Anyway, I need to find the uh, the office that I'm supposed to go to. Do you guys think that these days it's very difficult to find the door number? Like you go to any shops, any 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 doors, there's no numbers anymore. So if I want to find something, I find it extremely difficult. Not like the old days when they have a big number on the door or above the door so you can see exactly where you're going, right? This is annoying. This is super annoying. <laughs> now I have to walk up and down the street trying to find someone I can talk to or knows the place, know exactly where I'm heading. Well, at least this one has a number. This is unit 70 to 78. So uh, I need to walk further up. I think I may have find it. Number 90, York Way. So this is why I'm supposed to uh, meet the guy behind Project Alice. So uh, let's go inside. Yeah. Ooh. Uh. Revolving door. Don't we all like revolving door? Hi, Visha. It's Jimmy Chang here. Hi, I'm good. I think I'm just arrived. Uh, I'm downstairs now. So how do I find you from here? Okay. All right. I'll see you in a second. Yeah. Okay. Bye now. Oh, yes. I got my name. Right, let's go in. Oh, there we go. Oh, good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Coffee ready. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be in this meeting room here. Sure. Uh, shake your hand properly. Yes. You're tall. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm about to have this conversation, secret, secret conversation about the Alice camera, which I'm not allowed to film because these people will definitely kill me. <laughs> and uh, But I'm allowed to show this to you in a minute. That will be exciting. So at the, so let, let's, let's stay put for a while and uh, until the presentation finishes, then I'm going to talk about the camera. A few moments later. Right, so we've got an iPhone 14 Pro here. Um, the way it works is that the camera spins up a local Wi-Fi network that your phone connects to. So it's a secure Wi-Fi network. Um, only your phone is able to connect to the camera via secure password. You can still take phone calls. You can still be um, access the internet, use your 4G or 5G. Um, now, when you open up the app, which we have here, um, you'll see that there's basically a real-time feed. Um, let me just show you how the phone attaches. There's these grip me mechanisms on the back. Yep. You just take your phone okay. and you put it in like that. Right. So your phone is basically attached. And now, Let me just do this. So now you have this like real-time viewfinder essentially on Liam. Yeah. Liam's going to be the model for today. Um, <laughs> what you can do is uh, you can pull focus. So Liam's out of focus, but now he's coming more in focus. If I want to get this object in focus, it's coming more in focus. Yeah. Um, when you see this blue dot, everything is in auto. So the exposure at the moment is in um, auto. But if I want to get manual control, then I can start to drop the exposure. And you can see the shutter speed going down. Yep. 
you can see the shutter speed going up basically in real time, but that looks too overexposed. So I can just, sorry, I can just press on that button again and it automatically adjusts. Okay. When I take a photo by pressing the shutter button here, it's automatically transferred to the phone in real time. That asset is here and I can now airdrop that file to my computer. I can pull that file into Lightroom. I can WhatsApp it to friends of mine. Um, I can flick through some other photos that I took the other day around King's Cross in the gallery. Um, but you can see the latency is pretty good. Now, it's the same situation here for video as well. So with video, um, you can go in vertical mode or you yep. can go in horizontal mode. Uh, we've got this very, very um, incredible sort of stabilization algorithm that uses gyroscopic stabilization. But you can see how stable that is. Yeah. OK. Does it crop in? Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. And actually, if you press on it, you can see yep. the cropped view just there. OK. So you can decide. Uh, if you really put it in, you can see that's what the view will look like in terms of cropped. Right. OK. But that's the cropped view off. So these are the UI elements. You can kind of flick between them. We're going to be adding more as you go through. Yeah. On the left, you can see uh, the lens information, how far the subject is, the aperture. Yeah. Uh, here, I can actually increase the aperture. It's sort of increased to, to four there. Sure. And decrease it. The same with uh, temperature and white balance. So if I don't like the automatic, I can make it a bit cooler. Yeah. You can see the Kelvin changing. It can make it really cool. Yeah. But actually, if I put it back onto auto, the camera will then decide what it thinks is right. Sure. So this 9 millimeter Lumix, lens, Lumix Leica lens is very nice. But this is essentially what the vlogging situation looks like. Yep. Obviously, there's no flip screen. But you have this wonderful smartphone real estate at the top. Um, we bought this adapter from Amazon for about, I think, $10. And we use the classic uh, Gorillapod from Joby. Yep. But if you're vlogging, the stabilization is really nice, because I've, I've only got a 10% crop on, the, on here. Right. Um, now, the camera's in complete auto mode, but if if I want to increase the exposure a little bit, I can. You see that exposure going up. Yep. Um, I might drop the enhancement algorithm down. And now I can just record a file. I've got you in. And as I've stopped recording it, the file is accessible directly. In the phone. In the phone. Right. So a lot of vloggers, if they're getting stuff out on TikTok or something for the day, you can just bring that into CapCut. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just the ability to, to get access to those files is great. Yeah. I'm using pretty much exactly the same lens as you're using. <laughs> and you've got this big phone. And it might not always be necessary, but if you don't want the screen there, you can still see, you can still I can still record from here, but yeah. I can see myself. Okay, that's quite handy because uh, in in situations where you can put the uh, the Atlas camera on a tripod, right, and you're stepping away from the camera, right. you can use the phone screen to actually see. Just make sure, and also remote control it, uh, you know, by pressing record or something. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I can stop recording it here. I can start recording again. Yeah, I like the focus. The focus is actually pretty cool. Yeah, having a slider like. Yeah, and it has haptic feedback. <laughs> I can feel, I can feel it. Yeah. Okay. And because of the phone screen, you know, I think that manual focusing is quite feasible. Yeah. You know, uh, compared to normal camera, because the back screen resolution is usually quite low. You have to do punch in to actually see whether it's in focus yeah. or not. So you can actually punch in quite nicely on this one as well. If you double tap the screen. Double tap. And you can also pinch to zoom and then double tap. Ooh. Zoom back out okay. So right. Like smartphone does. So okay. I suddenly see boxes highlighting objects. Yeah. So this is the part of the AI recognizing certain things, right? So this, right. Is, this is the AI trying to recognize the three most interesting things. Oh, right. In the, in the scene. OK. So, you'll see, so eventually, when the AI does uh, start functioning, and then um, uh, these will be the object that will try to focus. Exactly. That's right. Right. Um, it is good. Yeah. Let me see if I can do like a, almost like a, like a video panning shot. Yeah, yeah so it, it senses that you're trying to pan. So it's it's very gimbal-like, uh, you know, like a good gimbal. It'll sense if you're trying to pan and try and try and accommodate that, whereas it will also sense if you're if you're doing an accidental. Thing. One thing I have to say now is that if I'm going to get this camera, that means I'm going to have to sell all my gimbals. <laughs> <laughs> so all my money's gone wasted. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's actually it's actually pretty good. It's pretty impressive. I, I like I like the I like the stabilization. That us. is interesting, right? So they. And in fact, this is actually a computer, so you can the USB port is multi-purpose, yep. and that can plug virtually anything to it. Yeah. Yep. Storage, Storage, like you said already, you can plug external SSD. Yep. You can plug in a mic. Uh, does it does it send power out as well? It 
can do, yeah. You can do, right. So that means you could potentially use a uh, plug a video light if you want to. Absolutely. So use an internal battery to power the light if you really want to. Absolutely. Anything else you can plug in? Uh, um, plug it into your laptop. Uh, right. And uh, take the phone, take the data off it. So you, can you use it as a power bank as well to charge your phone? <laughs> <laughs> really, you can? So many people <laughs> ask that. It's so funny. Right, OK. So what lens have you got there, Jimmy? This is the 40 to 150 f4 Pro. Yeah. And um, the stabilization can be quite crazy in this one. So does the lens have stabilization? There we go. You can see in focus now. Wow. Look, it's not shaking. And this is just digital IS. Yeah. Um, it's great. The IS works impressively good. And um, yeah, it's quite quite amazing. Do you yeah. think it's a fun camera to play with? Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, like you said, it's it's very smartphone like. Yeah. Because um, the, the interface and everything, and to be quite honest, I love the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I know it's a phone screen, but you know, like you can still say for camera, it's, it's still a nice screen. Um, but, yeah, nothing come close to the screen quality from an iPhone. Yeah. And uh, and you benefit from having a much crispier image projection. And uh, like I said, if for manual focusing, for instance, it would be that easy with a, with a resolution like this. You can yes. see it so easily whether it's in focus or not. While you can't with a, a camera screen, we have to do punch in and yes. do focus assist and things like that. This, you, I don't think you really need peaking, although it may help, and, uh, but it certainly works very well. So we just finished the, the, the demo with uh, yeah. Michelle here. Thanks so much for coming, Jimmy. It was no, really nice. Thank to, you. Uh, I think uh, I'm impressed. One, I think one word I'm impressed. I know there are a couple of areas that is still being ironed out at the moment, but we're getting there. And uh, very soon, so stay tuned. I may have a chance to play with the Alice camera for an episode. So uh, let, let's, let's wait for that to happen. And in the meantime, the uh, Alice camera is work in progress, I would say, that is continuing to perfect. It's almost there now. And then um, I'm pretty sure that you guys will have seen some of the footage uh, that I was playing with the camera earlier. And I can really say that is working. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing. So well done. Thank you well very done. much. Yes, uh, Thank that's you. all the hard work in the last few years. Yeah, last couple of years been tough, obviously, with a pandemic and with a global chip shortage. We're a small team, but we're very committed to this. Yeah. Um, we've been working really, really hard and we're getting really close to getting a, a product out that we hope that people will love. Yeah. And I, will, I can add another thing is that the sky's the limit. Let's put it that way. So yeah, I don't want to overhype too much, but, <laughs> I know, but you know, this is all another genius behind it. He's so tall, I have to tilt the camera up. <laughs> but yeah, he's another genius behind it. And uh, the whole thing is really something to say. And uh, Thanks, I'll, Jimmy. I'll wait until the full production model come out and then uh, to see whether that is something to scream about, not just say about, but <laughs> scream about. <laughs> okay, see you all next time. And uh, remember, stay tuned. And yes, I'm going to put the link for Alice in the description so you can click on it and check out the, uh, more info, perhaps, and, yep. uh, and all the latest developments. So yeah. Stay tuned for this space. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. Amazing. See you all later. Thanks. Bye. Take care, bye. Ooh, welcome to my bonus section. What do you guys think about Project Alice? I personally think it's super amazing. It's super exciting because it's a new type of camera that we haven't seen before. Even though it has an interchangeable lens mount that accepts micro four third lenses, it has a micro four third sensor, but it's a camera that is designed from ground up. There's nothing like you've seen before. It's really, really amazing. I think that it's going to be really cool when it finally hit the street. Uh, I'm going to get a review unit uh, shortly and I'll be testing in full. Not quite soon yet because um, uh, there's still a few things as you can see in the video that needs ironing out. Uh, so I will be testing a pre-production sample of the, uh, the, the camera and I'll testing whatever is available at time of testing. So you guys just have to stay tuned for that content because um, to me at least, from what I've seen for our tests so far, with, uh, with a short time with the camera, it's super amazing. I, th I just think that it's actually really, really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't say more than that because top secret, remember <laughs> top secret. So anyway, I've seen enough and I think that I, all I can say to you at the moment is that it's a very exciting camera, it's a very exciting uh, piece of hardware that would benefit not only uh, video content creators, but also still photographers potentially. And uh, so, Stay tuned for those contents. Until next time, though, I will speak to you all very soon. And uh, stay creative. Keep shooting. I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.